Uh, we are on session two of a multi-session romp exploring uh, an alternate to Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition uh, known as Open Legend RPG. It is a 100% completely open source role-playing system. You can see the entire rule set um, on their website, uh, which is, I believe, openlegendrpg.com. Um, and there are a number of really fantastic online tools out there that you can hit your favorite, your favorite uh, search engine and find without any difficulty as well. Uh, the full rule set has been loaded into both Roll20 and Foundry. Um, so two of the uh, biggest um, DTT systems out there. Uh, Jacob, do you know if it's also on any other VTTs? I do not know that. Okay. <laughs> I know I they, have, also they, know. they have they have a discard Discord rolling bot though. Nice. So nice. if you ever want to play Theater of the Mind on Discord, it's pretty handy. Uh, and an active server on Discord as well. Uh, yes. Very very helpful people there. Um, so uh, during our last session, as hopefully most of you saw through the recap, we had uh, people from very very different walks of life, and it's in fact extremely different universes of life in fact get pulled to the same location um they found out that they were on a uh, sort of deserted island a jungle island in the middle of an ocean um on a planet that none of them recognized um even two-step our um droid slash robot character um trying to read the constellations in the sky was unable to locate where in the universe they might be. Um, some of them have come from worlds filled with magic and wonder, some from worlds of high science fiction, and some from worlds that feel quite a bit more like our own with a few twists. Uh, George coming from an old West world that is sort of a, a dead wood, a weird West, dark fantasy kind of uh, universe. Robin coming from a world straight out of um, uh, sort of the most popular uh, modern urban fantasy stories that you might have heard of. Uh, the Dresden Files is a great example of sort of the inspiration for the world that he came from. Uh, San Francisco in fact, in, in specific. Milo coming from a sort of low fantasy, um, low magic, but still full of wonder universe, um, somewhere between your typical Dungeons and Dragons world and the Lord of the Rings. And Two Step, as I mentioned before, our resident uh, ex battle droid from a universe that uh, looks remarkably similar to those where battles occur amongst the stars. So here we are, we find ourselves with our party of four strangers trying to figure out where they are, why they are there and what to do about it. And as night fell, just as they were beginning to try to uh, settle in for probably a very uncomfortable rest, there was a scream in the near distance, in the jungle. And being the heroic figures that they are, almost all of them immediately jumped up and ran into the darkness. Um, I'm going to point out that not a single one of them can see in the dark. Um, but ran into the darkness heedlessly ahead. Nonetheless, Robin at least having the forethought to conjure a bit of arcane light on the tip of his staff. Moving carefully and quietly into the jungle, they found themselves approaching an interesting and unsettling scene. A small creature that appeared to be humanoid, though lizard-like, had fallen into a large pool of quicksand in a clearing in the middle of the jungle. And four or maybe even five large winged 
monkey creatures or 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 apes of some kind with big heavy bat wings were flying around in circles swooping down terrorizing this little creature probably with the intent to eat him once they were done playing with him our companions our friends our uh well, I guess neither of those things at this point, really strangers <laughs> thrown together, uh, but still managing to work together uh, quickly, dispatched every single one of those ghastly creatures, taking their life from them in a matter of seconds. And so now we find ourselves with, well, Robin, and Milo and Two Step all having fallen into this thick, heavy, viscous pool of quicksand. Uh, the little creature, uh, little lizard, little lizard person, um, still struggling to swim and claw his way to the edge. And George standing atop a 15 foot tall boulder looking down on the scene before him as he holsters his weapon. Robin. Yes. This little creature who you hear frantically speaking in a language you can't understand. <laughs> is struggling and swimming and he's three feet from where you find yourself at the edge of the uh, pool of quicksand. Your other companions are 15 feet in the opposite direction. Um, both of them somewhere between slowly sinking beneath the surface and paddling to try to keep themselves afloat. Although I will say that two step sinks up to about here and then finds himself standing on more solid ground at that point. <laughs> what does Robin do? Robin is going to start to make his way in the same direction that this creature is fleeing. And he doesn't share a language, but he's going to make kind of quiet, reassuring noises as he tries to offer help to the, to the creature up out of the muck. He's taller than him, so uh, they're there, uh, little, little fellow. You, you're going to be all right as he like uses his still glowing staff to kind of oar himself up and out of it to try and help this this little guy up out of the out of the quicksand. Yeah, um you're able without too much difficulty now that there's no combat going on and everything is basically stabilized to pull yourself out and reach out and just pick him up sort of under the arms and pull him to the edge and set him down on the ground. He flops on the ground, collapsing, his chest rising and falling in quick pants. I, I'm i quite sure I agree. At George, this point, yeah, go ahead. George would look for uh, a vine or a good way to get down and maybe use a vine to toss to uh, his... Uh, acquaintances. <laughs> acquaintances. Yes. Um, there are vines hanging all over this jungle. Um, and it is without difficulty that you're able to find one and use it to swing down. And with a couple of good tugs, you pull it free from various places where it has moored itself to a branch here and there, um, giving yourself another 15 feet of slack. And uh, you're able to toss that out uh, toward Milo and two step. Milo, what's going through your mind at this point? Hold on one second. Uh, I mean, Milo is uh, furiously treading water or quicksand, as it were. And uh, he, he is thinking this is not like it is in the books. I should not have ended in the quicksand, but we have saved. We have saved the person. So this is good. This is good. I am surrounded by heroes. And he is just, uh, he's still excited. <laughs> he feels like he's living in the fantasy. I love and that. As, as he gets the, the vine, he was like, oh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Constable. And he pulls himself up. Okay. And Ben, what were you saying? Uh, just, uh, if I've reached the bottom, could two-step then just sort of wade through the... Or yes. Or would that be a little too difficult? 
I mean, you certainly can do. You certainly can do. <laughs> um, it's going to be slow going no matter what. Yeah, just imagine in two step, just kind of just like slowly as they get to the edge, just the the sun just slowly going above <laughs> and below. Two step, I don't think two step breeds, so it's not it's right. not slowing them down that way. Right. But I think they're probably just going to operate louder now with lots of grit and sand just mm. in their like connective bits. Just mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now I I don't think he has any. Um like feats or anything that allow him to not need oxygen i certainly wouldn't be pushing for any kind of penalties at this point but we will assume that perhaps in order for all of your bits and bobs to work you need airflow of some kind that seems fair that does sure. seem fair all right so um as you all um with george's help pull yourselves free and uh robin is sort of knelt down at this point looking down at this little creature who stands all of two feet tall um and i've got a picture of him here is this something you kill and eat around here um he stands up and sort of sloughs off all of the muck that is on him you can see that he has a um sort of simple headdress of like feathers that are matted now to like his head and one of them is flopped down over uh over his face uh, in the wrong direction um and he he pulls a long um stick from a simple leather um sort of woven belt that is around his waist um other than the belt and the headdress um he's not wearing anything other than what looks like sort of tribal jewelry um things that that he must have uh, either made or had made for him with shells and um various colored stones and little bits of bone and things like that um but he immediately becomes very um animated um, and he pulls out this long stick, which is like mm, two thirds of his height, right? So it's it's maybe a, a foot and a half long, um, very, very straight. And he starts to gesture with it wildly. And he's like pointing up at the sky and then pointing down at the ground and then makes a big um, go ahead and give me a, uh, a learning roll, and I'll let all of you make this roll. Oh. <laughs> well, there's a nat one. I should be rolling with advantage, but... <laughs> Solid 11 there. Somebody got there, right? Zero bonuses. Um, why aren't you rolling with advantage? I... I, I should have. I just hit the button instead of uh, the. That's it. Ah, um, you also do you have no points in in the learning? Attribute? I have no points in learning. Okay, um, so uh, Jacob, with advantage when you have zero, it's just two d twenties, right? Correct. Yeah. So go ahead and roll again. Cool. Oh well, that's oh, a bunch of d twenties. What? The... <laughs> I'm not sure why I rolled three. Interesting. Uh, well, a twenty-two, nonetheless. Oh, there it is. That's why it rolled three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Twenty yeah. exploded. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It threw me off for a second. Though. Because it rolled them all at once, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 It knew it exploded before we did. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, <laughs> with a twenty-two, um, as well as a seventeen, both George and Robin are able to pick up pretty quickly on what this little creature is communicating. Um, and he seems to be just absolutely in awe at your group's abilities to take care of destroying these monkey creatures. Um, and he is, he is obviously heaping praise on all of you. Um, in addition, um, well, I'll ask, how do you respond to that, George? George first. Uh, uh, Honestly, the first thing that I am focusing on is um, I'm actually going to create a, take my Bowie knife out and I'm going to focus on bandaging up Milo while I just kind of watch the creature, realizing it's not a threat with that learn. I instantly go to, uh, sorry, Milo, right? Milo, Milo, 
Milo. Milo. Thank you. But, Milo. Uh, you notice as soon as the the lizard shaman creature starts whipping around with his stick, you see Milo go, oh! And you see Milo just like run into the brush. And just, oh. <laughs> He's looking for his stick. Oh. Ah, okay. You see George is about to bandage him up and Milo takes off <laughs> into the bush. Uh, and then oh. just had another... <laughs> Did you come back? I did. Oh, I found my stick. Uh, did, um, may I patch you up? You look beat up. That thing is fine over there. It's, uh, it's actually quite ridiculous, and I can't look at it. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Th- thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Are we hand waving, or do you want me to roll? The we're not in combat, so I wasn't sure. Um, no, we can hand wave because in ten minutes you guys are going to yeah. be back to full health anyway. So, so. Using my logic, I, I, I'd like to. It just that's role play wise. I'd like to kind of yeah. wrap up Milo's or Milo's bandages. Or wound. absolutely, absolutely. All right. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the system, um, after uh, during combat, you can use various abilities, not just magical abilities, to offer healing. And that's because damage in this game is more along the lines of um, sort of combat stamina, right? So um, you can use your presence to um, boost someone's ability to stay in the fight the way a bard would for example right without magic just by like encouraging them and giving them the kind of um words that they need to stay in the fight um you can use your logic to bandage wounds um and you can use magic as well um once you hit zero that's sort of the one knockout blow that it takes to to knock you down um but the assumption is the last one right which is very similar to uh, D&D as well, obviously. Um, but the big difference is that unless you take something called lethal damage, um, all of those hit points come back in 10 minutes of rest. Uh, lethal damage is um, significantly more worrisome. Um, and uh, if you take falling damage, usually uh, it would be lethal damage. So. At least that's what is a narrative device that <laughs> <laughs> at least that is what the rules recommend as a good example of when to use lethal damage, I will say that. Yeah. Um so while um so George sort of dismisses this little creature once he realizes he's not a threat and he moves over to um help Milo out and um generally make sure that the other two companions are in a good place. Um, Robin, on the other hand, um, you are actually beginning to pick up on the idiosyncrasies of this creature's language. You're beginning to be able to put together words here and there and make connections in your own mind um, with them. Um, And uh, he takes a deep breath after ranting and raving about how amazing all of you are. Um, and then he sort of, he grabs his little to you stick, it's very large stick to him, holds it against his chest and he bows down, uh, and he says, Me Greek, Wapuni Scout, who are you? I am Robin. You are Greek? Me Greek. Hello, Greg. You, we all fell like you did uh, from the sky. Uh, We didn't land in quicksand, but you climb trees. You fall. Uh, uh, higher than um. uh, Do you do you live here? Uh, Yes, Greg. Greek live, no, not here. Greek live in uh, Wapuni uh, home. And from his gesticulations, I got the sense that he too was shot out of a portal like we were. Is that? You did not. Oh, okay. You did not. You got the um, sense that he was just a, it, it, it crazily uh, overwhelmed by the fact that you were able to dispatch creatures that are four times his size without really even having to break a sweat uh, for the most part. Okay, so he's a native of this this place. 
that is what you seem That's... to have gathered. Yes, that is correct. Okay, then, uh, Rick, may we come with you to your home? Yes, please. Yes, yes, come home, come home. I show you, uh, Chief Bidik. Yes. Oh, um, Robin, we have a fire on the beach. Is that fine? Just leave burning. Where I come from, you burn down whole forests. That's a good point. Um, yes. Why don't Why don't we do our due diligence and put out the fire, and then, uh, well, uh, Rick, we need to uh, clean up our camp, and then we'll go with you to your home. Ah. Uh, mm. Okay, uh, I help. Which way? Uh, that way, and I'll point back in the direction that I think we came from. Okay, all right. Back over that cliff we fell down. <laughs> um, he, his little legs start taking off. He, he starts running off the direction. Come, come, we go quick. The little fellow's in a hurry, I guess. Uh, and Without thinking, Milo, Milo races after, still can't see in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> and then he waits for Robin's light. Um, I mean, he's he's fast for his size, um, sort of the same way that a squirrel is fast for its size, right? If you guys try to, you can probably keep up with him. Um, he doesn't seem to have particularly good night vision, um, so despite the fact that he's moving quickly, he's still like having to like check himself occasionally here and there. Um, but without very much time, um, you do find yourselves um, on the beachhead once again. Uh, where, where camp? Uh, and I'll, I'll look for our fire, I guess. Whatever's left of it. Yep. And sure enough, the fire is not too far away, a little bit north on the beach, um, and you all are able to uh, return to it fairly quickly. Um, it is still burning, um, although the wood has probably burned about halfway through at this point. Um, you're probably, you know, 50 to 100 feet away from the edge of the sort of jungle um, where the fire is. Um, and the, uh, the tide was rolling out as you all arrived. And, and so it is, it has now rolled out quite a bit. There's probably a hundred yards between where you are and where the edge of the ocean is at this point. Uh, water far away, how you want to put fire out? Kick sand on it. Okay, and he starts to like put little handfuls of sand on the fire. Hurry up! I take you to GP Big. I would help. Okay. All right. And what are uh, what are Milo and Two Step doing at this point? Oh, jump uh, joining in, obviously. Excellent. Then, without very much time at all, uh. you all manage to put out the put out the fire, um, dousing yourselves into the darkness of a moonlit ocean night, um, apart from Robin's uh, flickering staff of light, which gives a good 15 feet of light in every direction. Okay, now we go. Uh, Robin, I'm still having a hard time understanding this guy. Help, help me out. He wants, what exactly? Uh, he, he's, he lives here. Um, and, uh, and he's going to take us to his, his home, his, his, his society. And we're we're going to Meet somebody who's in charge of, of him, I guess. Do you see his teeth? Well, yes. I, I, I mean, that is a carnivore. I, I, I don't know. I don't. Are you? Are you worried? Yes, I'm worried. He's taking us back to cook us. Hey, I take you good nap. Meet Chief Pick. Tell him big story. I don't think they're. I don't think they're going to eat us. I, I mean, if this if this is what they have to offer in terms of their their fighters and their warriors, I, I think it'd be okay. All right. I, 
Ja. Okay. Does anybody else have anything to add? I, I mean, it, it, uh, I I need to find my I need to get home. I need to find my brother. I do not know where else to go, but uh, uh, Wizard Robin probably has a good idea. Maybe we can find information. When I see it, the first step in getting unlost is figuring out where you are, how to get to some place you know. And of course, the 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 ceremony. Yes. We have, we rescued a person, now we will go back to the chief, there will be a big celebration, there should be some stories written about us, this is how it happens, yes? Sure, yes, yeah. Yes, okay, okay. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, the, the, now, Milo, don't don't get your hopes over much, um, because with a little time to prepare for, for welcoming of, of heroes, it'll probably be a, a subdued nighttime ceremony cool. where the the chief has, oh, you know, of course. It, it takes two or three days for them to get everything ready. No, no, we will, we will, we will wait uh, and be waited upon. Yes, of course, heroes, of course. I don't know that we have that kind of time, but but you know what? Let's find out. I mean, you you can make a banquet with your magic. Just... <clears throat> no, no, no. I, I don't think George wants to eat any kind of food that I could magic up. Please, and no. Besides, I can manage clean water. Uh, uh, okay, Grick, uh, lead the way. Yes, okay, you follow. And he heads off into the jungle again. Um, it's, it's a good distance um, before you are able to um, get to the destination. And you find yourselves walking through an oppressive darkness um, as you move through the jungle at night. Um, and it is, for that reason, it is fairly slow going. But eventually, as you cut your way through the thick overgrowth of the jungle and you hear that sort of cacophony of um, nighttime sound, it begins to be overcome by other sounds slowly growing in your ears from somewhere ahead. As you continue to push through the dense undergrowth, uh, it becomes clear to you that the sound is coming from somewhere above you, in fact. And then you push through a particularly dense section of, of uh, under foliage and Standing on the dark jungle floor, your gaze ascends up to a hidden village. A village suspended in the trees above you. Even though it's night, little huts and rope bridges and pathways are well lit by torch and lantern light and a buzz of activity among the people of this treetop village is obviously responsible for the din of noise that has slowly overcome the sounds of the forest around you. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Big Big is like tugging at Robin's uh, pant leg. Chief Big Big up there, I introduce you. Metal, metal man, you're not going up there. And if you're going up there, I'm not going up there. You're going to take that whole place down. Two step shrugs in a way that seems a little bit weird, but sort of shrugs, and it's just like, well, they can't eat me, so <laughs> with this. <laughs> but you're going to fall through the floor. Uh, actually, let's do an assessment of that. Do these people seem like like sound structural engineers? Hmm, that's a fair question. That's a fair question. What do you think would be a good role for that? Uh, logic? <laughs> that feels like a sort of, like, using, using my knowledge. Yeah, go and, for it. Absolutely. It. Absolutely, I'll give it to you. No, that you can't. I'm telling you right now. Let me look. It, it, well, that's that's a nine. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Milo's actively peering in the darkness because obviously fairies must be somewhere in this glen. And he is convinced the sounds of the people are keeping the fairies at bay. Mm, I see. I see. So to two steps concern. Um... It's not actually two steps concern. It's George's <laughs> concern. Two step. I hadn't even thought about it. Then I will say two two steps um, assessment. How's that? Mm-hmm. Two two steps assessment. Um, it is. I mean, the the rope bridges might not be strong enough, um, but the like the huts that are up there they seem good and stable. Two step again shrugs, and it's very clear you're suddenly realizing that they've only just learned how to do that, and they kind of shrug and they say, "Um, well." It would be rude to not go up there. <sighs> Until you break their house and then they eat us. But whatever. Actively rude is better than accidentally rude. Yep. No. <laughs> Other way around. <laughs> Milo, as you are looking around um, trying to find some sign of magic in this place, what you do see is tiny child-sized lizard people scurrying among an intricate tapestry of bridges, zip lines, and ladders woven into the fabric of the towering trees above you. Huts fashioned from vibrant leaves bound together with thick lengths of vine cling tenaciously to sturdy branches and wide tree trunks. Their roofs are adorned with iridescent flowers Uh, Flower petals, shimmering, shining beetle shells seem to catch the glimmering moonlight, reflecting it back at the stars. And above them, through the leaves, a tapestry of dappled moonlight seems to glimmer and cast a silvery kaleidoscope of shimmering patterns on the village and the floor below. A chorus of chattering voices, melodic chirps, the occasional soft rustle of scaled feet on a leafy canopy above fill the air. These people are agile and nimble and navigate this treetop domain with grace and precision as though they have owned it for time immemorable. Every corner of the village is alive with activity. The lizard people have scales gleaming in hues of emerald, topaz, and amethyst. And they're going about their evening tasks with meticulous attention. Some tend to intricate gardens where exotic flowers bloom in riotous profusion, releasing intoxicating fragrances that mingle with the earthy scent of the jungle. Others are counting and putting away fruits and insects in small cages. Others move through the branches, picking yet more delicacies, their nimble fingers darting among the canopy like flashes of colored lightning. Would I, would George smell any tobacco in the air? Hmm. You smell something that smells, that gives you the tobacco feel in the back of your throat yes mm. well uh, uh, Grick oh. yes, he, he pulls out his his his, his pipe and he he shook uh, smell this is there is there something like this here right I I really need some please. He takes the bowl of the pipe in his two hands and like looks up at you. Many thank. No. Oh, and he no, sticks no, it, it sticks it in his uh, mm. belt. No, no. Uh, uh, let, let me help. Uh, and Milo goes up. Uh, he pulls out of his pocket uh, pipe weed like this. He's looking for something like this, and then he puts it back in his pocket. Uh, he turns to Robin, like looking up at him from the floor of the jungle. I don't understand. Uh, he, he, and I'll point to George, he was showing you his 
pipe because uh, he, he smokes uh, plants and wanted to know if you have any here. You are trying to speak to him in his language, yeah. right? Okay. Okay. I've never heard the word smoke or pipe or <laughs> he breathes fire. Uh, um, near, near fire. Uh, he pulls the pipe out of his belt and like looks at it. I reach forward to grab it. <laughs> uh, why he tried to take my pipe? No. Why he tried to take? He doesn't say pipe. He says, "Why does he try to take my stick?" He says, uh, "Blow stick." Uh, I don't understand him. I, I right. I, I, I see he's stressing out. Uh, in my mouth. Uh uh uh. Um, he reaches into a little pouch on his belt and he pulls something out and he pokes it into the uh, the hole that you would actually pull smoke through. The one that would go in your mouth. Uh-huh. <laughs> he shoves it in there um, and then he turns the object looks at it sticks his little clawed finger down through the bowl of the pipe and cleans it out some and I don't think it will work but let's see and he puts his mouth on it and goes and you hear a little tink and he turns it and looks no it's no good and there is a little um, like bone needle that has jammed itself into the bowl of the pipe. Robin, could you help me, please? Yes. Um, may I? May I see that? Uh, and I'll kind of reach for the the pipe. I'll, yes. And I'll take it from him. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'll try and like with my finger work the bone shard needle out and like out back through the stem. Uh, and I'll go. Uh, Milo, may I may I use some of your your pipe? Oh, of course. Thank and you. He, he hands you some, and he'll he'll tap some into the the bowl and and um and George, look look away from me, would you? Uh, and uh, Robin will will light the pipe. As weed. you're doing this, yeah, your words begin to slur, uh, and you begin hey, to like oh, what is this see stuff? people slowly merging in and out of themselves. Is it a pleasant experience? <laughs> it, 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 uh, you feel... Um, I, 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 Robin has been know, high before. It's not... Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a real, real strong sativa sort of, sen- sort of sensation. <laughs> All right. Uh, wow, okay. Uh, thank you. Hello. Um, uh, 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 Grick, like, like that? Uh, and Robin will just kind of hold the pipe out to George. Watch, watch out. He, he takes it. He's starting to get a little flustered and he just puts it in his pocket. Hmm. Uh, it, it's for leaves. Yes. But I don't understand that, but I I, I get he's I, I translate for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Ah. Uh why? It's fun. <laughs> uh you uh you okay? And Robin will take a second and just like center himself and just like, okay, wait a minute. All right, what's going on in my physiology? I need to have my wits about me. And just kind of center and snap himself out of the the high, counter the neurotransmitters if he can, and all that, and sober himself up. Okay. How are you going about that? Uh, with my alteration skill, I'm going to to give me a roll. Sift out the. the give me a roll. Yeah, I'd love to. Who's that's gonna lean into Milo and just be like, 
I don't really know what's happening right now. This might need to be a human thing you explain to me later. Giant eight foot tall robot suddenly squats down real low. <laughs> uh, and you <laughs> you see Milo's face just drop because he really thought Wizard Robin was going to cast a spell and then nothing happened <laughs> that he could see. Um, yeah, so um, you managed to basically we, 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 we make look, yourself look, look. sweat it out. Like suddenly you are just <laughs> soaked in sweat, but it pushes the toxins <clears throat> out. Um, and you are no longer affected by the slow bay. <laughs> you okay? I am now. Um, George, listen, we're probably going to get more from Big Big Grick. Is that the name of your chief? Chief, yes. Chief Big Big. Big Big. Big Big. Big Big. Okay. Big Big. From uh from Big Big. Uh then then we are from, from Grick here. So I think if we go talk to to them we'll I mean maybe find out where we are. Yes, yes. I tell Big Big. I tell Chief. You are big hero. <sighs> up up there, right? Yes, yes. Okay. okay. Uh and Robin's ready to go up into the trees. Okay. Well, he is going to lead you to a um, rather diminutive ladder, um, as well as various um, vine ropes that come down in the same place, and he's going to scamper up. Just <clears throat> uh, metal man. Two steps, fine. Climb up first, I guess. Uh, I'm going to stand away from the ropes. You sure? You can go first if you'd like. Nope. This guy yourself. first. George, are you afraid of heights? Uh, I wasn't till now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was honestly hoping for a little bit of tobacco to calm my nerves. I, I, just, I just needed a little... Just a, uh, I'm, I'm very nervous about going up there. I mean, Milo's Same. shit's really good. For that. <laughs> yeah, I, do, I do not use it myself. It is, uh, I'm too young, but uh, too, I have too... it as a, as a gift for other uh, royals and heroes. So, But uh, for you, Mr. Constable, yes. George? Constable, thank you. Constable George, yeah. Well. yeah uh, I, I actually kind of like that. Uh, so... Um, Metal. Uh, well, <clears throat> we'll talk about that later. M metal man. Uh, what he said before was he would like to be called Two Step. That is his name. Oh, sorry. What? Thank you. Two Step. Are you gonna climb? Sure. And oh. Two Step just turns and starts climbing. Just. <laughs> Okay. Do um, I need to make a check on that? I do need you to give me a check on that. Yeah. Ooh, uh oh. <laughs> uh, George keeps stepping back. <laughs> Robin is right under, just looking up. Yep. I Milo is expecting some kind of science to just have him fly, but it's not happening. This, yeah, unfortunately, my jetpack's blasted off in the portal. I. Uh... Uh, um, so that would be a might check. Okay, I was really hoping... Unless you have something from, else. Unless um, you have something agil else. No, actually, Might's fine. Might will do just fine. Okay. Would we consider this ladder to be a lower technology than me? <laughs> <laughs> not not applicable at this point in time. <laughs> that ladder's got a spear! I'm continue that bit. <laughs> Ooh, oh. that's a solid nine with okay. bonuses. <laughs> um, so you start with the little tiny ladder, um, and you, you sort of reach up and grab it about eight and a half feet up and pull yourself up, and you tear through, like, eight rungs straight down, just destroying the top ten feet, of, or the bottom ten feet of this ladder. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes. Th thank you. But shortly afterward, as you uh, as you assess the situation, you realize yeah the ladder's not going to support the weight of somebody your size, um, and you start to use the vines 
and climb up, and you manage to slowly make your way to the top. Just get, just I like the idea that it gets the t they get to the top and they're just like, sorry, sorry, sorry about that, sorry. Um, as you get up to the top, the villagers that were in that area immediately scatter in every direction <laughs> across all of the bridges that are connected to that platform and then just gather at the edge of each of the bridges staring at you and like hi sorry uh i don't want to hurt you i i'm friendly i am two-step who's next uh Robin has knotted a loop at the bottom of one of the vines uh, that's that's hanging by Two Step, and he's gonna climb up and put one foot in it. Call up, all right, Two Step, bring me up. It's gonna be another mic check. <laughs> Is that my mic check? That's your mic check. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're mightier than I, I am. mean, you, you've got a five. That's that's as high as you can have in any of you're your stats right now. You're absolutely right, though. Like, two step wouldn't even question that. They would just begin to do what they're told. <laughs> just... Okay. I really thought that was a one then, but that's a 13. Yeah, definitely um, was. <laughs> yeah. Without, without difficulty, you managed to pull Robin all the way up um, and help him to get on the platform. Um, huh. All right. It's quite dark down here. Uh, I guess I'm going to try. Uh, might roll. Are you going to climb? Oh, I'm climbing. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Uh, you, you manage to slowly make your way up using the um, very, very thick and sort of um, deeply in-cut bark of these trees along with the vines to get footholds and elbow holds and work your way up to the top. How high is it? I, I might have missed that. Um, your best guess would be probably 60 feet. Oh, nice. As soon as I get up, I, I, I just on my knees crawl away from the edge and then I, I, sit, <laughs> I sit on my bottom for a minute uh, and I wait. <laughs> Fair enough. Milo straps his stick to his back and he looks at the first eight feet of a ladder built for someone his size that was destroyed by no two. He's like, mm. uh, and then he uh, and he tries to do a running start and he tries to parkour his way up to where he can get to the ladder and then just climb, climb. <laughs> um, okay. All right. All right. Uh, give me um, an agility check for the parkour. <laughs> Here I come. No problem. Um, you manage to bounce, bounce, bounce up, grab a hold of one of those rungs, and then easily climb your way up to the top. Um, as Milo arrives, a hush falls over the lizard people who are at the edges of five or six different little bridges that go out from this central platform that you all find yourself on. And you can feel a crackle of anticipation filling the air Ooh, their eyes say, i thought you were gonna say the crack of the floor <laughs> no no <laughs> the little uh, little uh, lizard folk uh their eyes are wide with curiosity and then they begin to part on one particular platform making way as a figure taller than the rest of them walks through the space though still under three feet in height. <laughs> Just check it. Despite that fact, he is no less proud and sure of himself as he walks across this rope bridge and stands facing the four of you. Clearly the chief, if not by the deference shown to him by his people, he wears an elaborate headdress, unlike anything any of you have ever seen, crafted, obviously, from the skull of a monkey bat and dozens of brightly colored feathers. It currently sits pulled low over his face, a 
testament to his status. Further, a broad cloak made from the wings of a monkey bat wraps his shoulders, dragging on the ground behind him. And he seems to um, have one of the creature's tails attached to the back of his headdress, which he pulls over his shoulder and strokes like a uh, well-loved pet as he looks at each of you. You see this gentleman standing before you. Uh, mm, mm. Uh, Milo goes into a very deep a deep bow that it's kind of close to what a bow should probably look like but not quite okay all enthusiasm no technique yeah yeah okay he's, yeah he's of the court but he's not allowed to go near it because he tends to make scenes sure gotcha I with a, put, oh, yeah, go ahead, man. No, 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 no. Go ahead. I, you know, sitting on my bottom still. I just kind of like mm-hmm. put my elbows on my, my uh, knees and cover my face a little bit and just like rub my eyebrows. <laughs> 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 Two step can see that George is distressed and walks over to put. Him. Say that last bit again. Uh, Two step sees that they're in distress and sort of just walks over and puts a hand on their shoulder, like awkwardly. Yeah, sort of just on George. Pat, pat, <laughs> pat, yeah. And how does Robin um, react to what he sees before him? Uh, Robin will kind of watch the um, signs of deference that the crowd, as they part, are showing to him. Are they are they bowing? Are they genuflecting? And he will probably go down on, like, a single knee and so that he's not towering over him uh, and, and just kind of lower his head respectfully, but then come up and and make theoretically eye contact. Okay. So what you have seen the people um, of the village do is um, either sort of just politely make way, or you have seen them do a a posture similar to what you saw Grick do, which is sort of a hands clasped sort of like this on their chest and then a bow. As you all react, in your own given ways with a grand gesture he tosses the tail of the dead monkey bat over his shoulder from behind from one shoulder to the other and he says puffing out his reptilian chest i big big when you now realize that big big simply means he's the biggest one around i kill monkey bat single-handed You, strangers here, also slayer of monkey bat. Welcome to village. Slayer of monkey bat, hero among people. We, Wapuni, this tree town. The rest of you hear Glibnab when he says the name of the village. Come, we celebrate. And he, he points in the direction of a more stout bridge uh, than the four others that depart from this location uh, with a long obsidian-tipped spear that he has in his hand, its rough-cut edges showing signs of use and age. Robin, you notice that on a leather strap around his neck, there is a small rough cut pink crystal that is pulsing and glowing with what you immediately recognize as some kind of arcane energy. I just got a glimpse. I don't have time to like look at it, but I've, I've made note of it. Uh, he leads you all to sort of the center of this treetop village. There's a large open space um, that sort of acts as a bit of a market among the people here. Um, and, oh, sorry, puppy is barking. Come here. Come here. Come here. Uh, do we understand what he said? 
or is it is it still Robin translating? Um, I will allow everyone to give me um, another uh, learning role, or let me see what else might be applicable. I would also allow a high enough perception roll or logic roll, but those would be a higher DC. Hmm. All zeros. I guess Milo will go with learning. Okay. He's not a mental powerhouse. I'm going to give myself disadvantage because I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. What are we trying to work out right now? If, if you we... are picking up on the language. Well, I'll. You said we could use logic, right? To... Yes, but it would be a higher difficulty. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just trying to piece together context clues. Mm -hmm. Something two steps great at. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you're getting a lot of one to one, like, okay translations from Robin. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe he's using idioms too much for you. That's a that's that's a solid five. So. None of you are able to um, pick up on the language, despite the fact that you're concentrating heavily on it. Um, however, as you focus on trying to understand him, each of you, Robin included, because you've only gathered enough of sort of a, to have a very, very broken understanding of, of what uh, is being communicated to you. You feel a presence in your minds that you felt when you were falling through the void. That deeply alien presence reaching through your psyche and you feel a pressure as something is pulled tight from the center of your foreheads, like a long thread that you cannot see, and snaps into the head of Big Big. And suddenly your mind floods with an understanding of their language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm throwing up. <laughs> it's, it's, it's more dry heaving, but <laughs> it's disgusting. Nope, not happening. <laughs> Milo puts out the canteen again. <laughs> no, 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 no. As that happens, Big Big turns around, raising his spear high in one hand and the other gesturing for silence. And immediately the entire village goes quiet. The scent of the jungle hangs in the silence, a melange of moist earth, floral blooms, and the faint musk of reptilian scales mingling with the fragrant wisps of foliage and the ever-present aroma from smoke cooking fires. As the chief fixes his gaze upon you, his eyes burn with piercing intensity through the open sockets of the monkey skull. He waits until the silence has become pregnant and then turns away from you to his people and says, we have great heroes among us. People that I have never seen here on our island who have slayed many of the evil bat demon creatures that have plagued our village and attempted to hunt and kill our children for the past year. Give them a cheer of greeting and make them welcome here in our home. 
And then he turns to each of you and he says to each of you, please tell us of your exploits, great warriors and adventurers, great heroes of our people. You are Wapuni to us. And that is the name of their people. And he waits. It is just like in the books. And Milo just starts rambling off everything he's done from climbing a tree to riding a horse really fast to everything that brought him here. It, it, I mean, it, it is just a deluge of information of every adventure that he's been on up to this point. Um, and he will, he will continue to do that until someone simmers him down. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, is anybody going to stop Milo from talking? Uh, George is just going to follow him because now he has his canteen and, and kind of listen. And you'll see the only bit of excitement you've really seen from him as positive is when Milo talks about the horseback riding. This seems to be like a, that's an understanding. But no, he's going to let Milo go. If, <laughs> if everyone lets it go, and eventually about 10 minutes later, and then there were skeletons everywhere around us. And I was fighting and my brother was casting spells in the background because he will be a great wizard someday. And then... Whoops! And we were here, and then with the boat, and then of course we get the monkeys, and we kill the monkeys, and it was it was great because you know we are heroes now because we want to help out you. And now I am with the wizard and the constable and the man of uh, the automaton of science, and uh, we are very happy. And Milo goes to one knee and he pulls out his greatest possession, and he offers it to the uh, uh, to the chief, and it is an ancient uh, thousand year old thing that. Uh, Back in uh, UEFA, we call a multi-tool. It was owned by the family Gerber in the time before <laughs> the the collapse, and he put, it's it's rusted. There's only like three things left on it, but like it's his greatest treasure, and he he offers it up to the king. Um, Chief Bikbik bows and takes the gift in his uh, hands. Is it sized for you? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's sized for it's sized for, for a human. human. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So he takes it in his two hands and yeah. sort of turns it here and there. Um, this is an interesting device. What is this cold, hard material between these sections of wood? This is uh, this is a uh, steel, like a uh, like a two step. It is a uh, uh, metal. Uh, so uh, and he pulls out like he pulls out uh, a couple of uh, silver coins, uh, like the coins. It is metal and it is very good for cutting. And then the one that goes whoa, 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 whoa. with this, you can open a wine bottle. I apologize. What is a bottle? Oh my God! You do not have wine. We have a drink that we create that allows us to become more in touch with the spirit world around us. Whiskey. <laughs> Finally. Yeah, George, you should have some. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh. absolutely. And he shouts out for um, some of their drink to be brought to you. Uh, <clears throat> how do I use this? Uh, and, and he does, he opened, like, only one of the the blades is still working, but again, for a halfling or a lizard folk, it's like a machete. It, you know, it's, it's about four inches. And okay. he, he flips it out, and then he, uh, he 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 pulls out a piece of wood, and he he shaves off a chunk of the wood. Incredible! Uh, he asks for it back, mm -hmm. and takes it in his hand and swings it a bit here and there. This is a godly gift. It's uh, passed down from uh, generation to generation in my family, but uh, I knew that one day when I become a, a knight, I would give it to my first liege and first uh, king who I meet. So it is, it is for you. Uh, the, the last bit, uh, no one knows. It's a can opener. It's just like the old school. Like we have no idea what this is. I, having heard the purpose of this 
incredible and powerful tool cannot accept. And he hands it back to you and says, for I am not a king and wield not the scepter. Uh, he bows his head and he puts back, in this case, uh, it is a pleasure to meet uh, another great warrior. Whom, uh, whom do you serve? Who is your uh, liege lord? We have not served a king or ruler for more generations than my people can remember. And there are prophecies that perhaps another will come to take the allegiance of the Fire Island. Perhaps one of you are they. You have not met Robin the wizard yet. Robin, tell uh, your story. It's your, it is your story. But Robin will step up uh, and recount the uh, a brief history of his life, the the traveling from from place to place, and always catching the uh, the ire of some bully or warlord or whatever. Uh, and eventually having to move on after after refusing to kind of lay down uh, in in the face of insurmountable odds uh, and I would say uh, big big you you said that the monkey demons are they are they new or are they have a, they always been around to to harry your people? Oh, Joey. The demon creatures of, of every kind have only appeared on the island in the last year and in ever greater number. We do not know their source. Perhaps they are a test for my people. Perhaps they are a test for he or she who would claim the scepter of kings for themselves. Perhaps they are some fell trick sent our way by the Wapungo, our fiercest enemies. I know not. Did you tell me of the Wapungo, your enemies? Of course. You see, we have been involved in a war for many years, a war with, with no beginning and no end. The Wapungo are a brutish, giant people who want nothing more than to rob, kill, and destroy from those who wish to live in peace. They claim they have rights to the Great Star, but they are wrong, for the Great Star belongs to my people as it always has. The Wapungo claim it fell on their capital city ages past, but I assure you, it fell on the holiest of our ground, not on some non-existent capital of a people who are nothing more than savages and should could never have had a capital of their own anyway. The beautiful crystals are payment for lives taken. And the heavens gifted them to us for a reason. But the Wapungo refused their, to relinquish their claim. And so we must fight. May I, may I examine that crystal? May I see it? Of course, and he will lift it off and hand it to you. Thank you. Has that, has that drink come yet? <laughs> yes, in fact, it has. As this conversation is happening, um, a small handful of the uh, Wapuni will come in with large um, hollowed out gourds 
um, that are sloshing with a liquid of some kind. Um, and as you lift it up and, and smell it, it smells at once um, intensely sweet, intensely sour, and intensely of something that will probably knock you on your ass. And George definitely takes a big old swing. He's not thrilled, but maybe this will help calm his nerves a little bit. Absolutely. Um, Bic Bic, I'm sorry, um, Grick is is there and um, is one of the people that has come with the uh, jugs of juice. Um, and uh, he looks at you as you take a drink. He says, oh, that, that's a really large amount. Are you going to be okay? I should be fine. <clears throat> that's, that's a little... Mm. Do you have uh, meat sticks here? Yes, I, I will bring you something to eat immediately. Probably don't drink any more of that until you've eaten a good amount. Mm. Yep. <laughs> uh, give me a fortitude roll. <laughs> there it is. Hey, oh. All right. Um, you, you immediately feel buzzed. Like, oh. Seconds after you you take this stuff in, you feel buzzed, and it's not the buzz of alcohol. Um, there's something psychedelic about this drink. All of the all of the colors uh, of this village are more vibrant and brighter, and um, you're pretty sure that you are now seeing colors that you haven't ever seen before. In fact, um, all of the sounds of the forest around you and the villagers around you take on a distinctly more melodic feel. Um, and suddenly everything falls into a natural cosmic harmony of sound. No dissonance to be heard at all. You also feel fairly dizzy. Uh I just sit down and I uh, I start imagining the stories that like Milo was talking about and Robin. Excellent. Um, so Robin, what are you uh, what are you trying to gather from the stone? It's it's a glowing crystal on a chain that that, that he has described as having a connection to a bigger one falling. So what I'm gonna start by doing is just a little uh, pull up an arcane lens to see if there's a spell powering this thing or a power source or, you know, is it just electricity and there's an LED in this thing? Like, you know. Okay, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, why don't you give me a will roll? Yeah, gladly. Oh, nice. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> hey, you know, whatever. Okay, still <laughs> points is points. That's right. It happened in the, the right order. Giveth. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So you begin to focus on stone and using your your arcane lens you study it and you try to reach out with your your mind with the, the power that has resided in you from the moment that you uh, were old enough to recognize such things and you find yourself falling into the crystal, not physically, but losing yourself into it almost hypnotically. And then you find yourself standing next to a clear, cool spring. The 
the air is no longer humid. It is perfectly comfortable. And a young woman is approaching you, robed in a white gown as beautiful as the stars. She stops and says to you, Hello, I am Asha. Thank you for finding me. I am desperately in need of rescue. Who are you, brave warrior? Aishna, my name is Robin. I will help you however I can. Robin, the name of a hero. A creature has trapped me here in this place, locked my body and soul away. And though I have struggled to free myself, I find that I cannot overpower it. I was shipwrecked here a year ago. All of the survivors, we were all imprisoned by a brutish people known as the Wapungo. And then we were taken to the pinnacle of what they call the Dragon's Maw. She turns <laughs> and points in the vibrant green jungle daylight that you find yourself in at the mountain, smoke rising from its peak in the far distance. I heard them speak of a powerful object that can be used to control not only this place that I find myself in to turn it to the will of the wielder, but also it is said to be able to control the will of the people of this island as well. To stop them from their brutish acts of aggression and command them as a king would its subjects. If you could find this, this object, this scepter of kings and bring it to the dragon's maw, surely you would be able to free me from my prison. Ashna. Going to endeavor to do exactly that. Are you are you in a lot of pain? Does, does your your I cannot express in words the agony of being bound to this place. She steps in close and like presses herself against you. Please. Please save me. Uh, and Robin is going to like gently put his hands on her shoulders and, and to, like take a step back. Ma'am, we're going to help you. We're, we're going to, to get you out of this situation. As you step back, you can feel her arms like falling from behind you, but she kind of like holds on to you until you have stepped out of her grasp. And then she turns suddenly and looks behind her as though she's heard something terrifying. I and she says, the demon worshiper comes, I must hide. And she runs off into the forest. <coughs> and then you flash back out of the gem and you're back among the Lapuni.
George, I'm seeing things. <laughs> I, I assume that was all in his head and like we it must him. you none of you saw yeah, anything yeah. correct you do it's... see me like flinch and like take a knee and... so milo might have missed it because as soon as george started tripping out and you stopped telling stories like milo was devoid of stimuli and he started pushing no two to tell or two step to tell his story because he's like convinced this 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 automaton must have a great story too. Absolutely. Well, let's hold off then on how Robin reacts this moment and um, flash to the rest of you. Um, so uh, George is enjoying his uh, drink and has like five sticks of some kind of white, very, very soft, delicate flesh um, on sort of kebabs. Um, very strongly seasoned, um, not unpleasant, but very different from anything that you've had before. Um, mm. For those of you that are following along from the real world, um, the texture is very similar to um, perfectly cooked lobster. So what you see is uh, George has the stick of meats in one hand, and he's got his, his revolver out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Shelly. You've always been there for me. He kisses it. And he bites a piece of the meat. <laughs> Shelly shines and sparkles in the light <laughs> like you've never seen before. As though she was prepared for a grand ball. Oh, we're going to dance tonight, Shelly. <laughs> so how does Milo convince or try to convince Two-Step to share? Yeah, I mean, again, Milo's got some drunk uncles, so like he he's seen that before. Like, what what's going on with George? So yeah, so I mean, he's just like excited, like a little kid. He he, he runs up to to no two when there's you know no stories being told. Uh, no, a two step, two step, uh, two step. It, it is your turn. You must you must tell them uh, of of everything of all the places you have seen. You have been to other worlds. So and uh, I, he just looks like a child, like looking up at you, waiting for the story time to start. And two step can't really say no to that. There's just you can see there's some there's some there's some cogs turning me metaphorical cogs anyway, um, turning because two step can't lie, but I'm going out on a limb and saying there is some kind of prime directive in the universe that he's from, they're from, so they're trying to avoid words like space battle and galactic <laughs> empire. And trying to kind of <laughs> trying to keep it as 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 acceptable as possible in terms of just I uh, I was built and trained to fight, and then there was uh, there was a war, but I was destroyed, and then someone put me back together again, and then I I went out to go live my own life. And then I was sucked into a portal, and I found myself here. Uh, and the whole time they're just politely holding this gourd, which mm -hmm. they're not drinking from, mm -hmm. just just holding it because they were offered it, and they just took it in in, in just being polite. You've and also been offered this... the meat sticks. Are you holding one of those? As yeah, well? yeah. Just anything that they're offered, they'll take a hold of as their arms slowly fill with things, <laughs> as they're just sort of like, mm -hmm, "Thank you, thank you." Um, and they're trying to explain this story, but it's incredibly dull because they're leaving out all of the explosions and stuff. So once you've finished, uh, Chief Bick Bick um, sort of thinks for a moment, and he and he says, "So." If I understand what you're saying correctly, you were not born, but created. Yes, that's true. There are legends of the an ancient and powerful people those that are said to have once ruled this land with great magic. And it is said that they had the capability. Dogs are playing, I apologize. Getting a bit lively now, everyone's had a gourd. Uh, he's, getting, he's getting a bit aggressive. We have a four and a half month old puppy who desperately wants to play with the seven year old dog that's having none of it at this point. So I apologize. Um, 
He says, it is said that they had the capability of imbuing life into objects such as yourself, but I have never seen, nor do I know of any who has ever seen such a creature. Were your makers the Naga? No. Uh, no, my, 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 my makers were... Um, I was trying to think of a name then. Um, but my makers were uh, 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 Mill Incorporate. Ah. The Mill Incorporate. I have not heard of these people, but they must also be powerful mages. Um, yes, uh, very talented creators, uh, but the, I'm not supposed to be like this. <laughs> I'm an accident. Uh, you I'm were not... not created with intention. I wasn't, I was created for a purpose, but now I want a different purpose and I'm not supposed to. So I'm, I'm, I've never seen anything like me either. I see. You are singular. There is no other being on your island like yourself. Just, uh, on all the islands, just, there's just one two-step, just one me. You have traveled to many of the islands. In a manner of speaking, yes. My people have never been able to leave this island. The tides are deeply treacherous. And any of the, what is the word? The, the floating wood no. that comes near the island, big or small, we've seen very, very large wood floats and, and smaller ones. Inevitably, they are dashed against the rocks and cannot escape. Yes, we call them ships. There was a destroyed one where we landed. Ships. Are there? The word are feels there... strange in my mouth. Are there other strange things that have been happening recently? Uh, colorful lights in the sky? Or uh, uh, other strange people, maybe people who you there, haven't met, like us. There, there were strange, colorful lights in the sky earlier this day. In fact, um, yes, Has that ever happened before. Not, not that. No, but I certainly could not say that there are no strange happenings here. As I already mentioned, these demonic creatures have begun to appear, twistings of the natural life of our island. There's also, of course, the cursed Big Head. I'm, I'm sorry? Yes, the Big Head. It is a monster. It is... It is a giant head made of sticks and vines that appeared one day, I, I don't know exactly when, perhaps less than a year ago, and it guards the Northeast Peninsula jealously. It is a huge, horrifying edifice uh, of, of, of monstrous proportions with, with demonic uh, features. Uh, None of us dare to go near it, but any who have attempted to travel beyond Big Head have never returned. Is it alive? It is evil. <coughs> I have never go. seen it move, and neither have any of my people, but we tend to steer clear of it.
there is, of course, also the prophecy. It is said that if a king lays claim to the island, that the dragon will spit flame once again. Ah! Dragons? Yes, the dragon. Oh, oh, keep, keep, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. The dragon is to the north of the island. You can see it from anywhere if you can get beyond the tree cover or, or up above the canopy. It rises majestically into the sky a greater distance than I could possibly measure. It's great mouth pouring smoke up into the air night and day. But it is said that long ago, it also spewed fire and death on the island. And it is said that should a king lay claim to the island again, that the dragon will once again awake. Which brings us to, and at this point, Robin wakes up. <laughs> Sorry. Do, have you spoken with the woman? Ah. Were you touched by the spirit woman? Asha. Asha, I... I, I was visited by Asha in the grove. Yes, I have. She, Did she ask you to find the scepter? She did. She did. She asked me to find the scepter and take it to the dragon's maw and to use it. I see. She has made the same request of myself. Though here leading my people, I do not have the freedom to go in search of it. Do she, you seek to lay claim to the island as your own? I do not. I do not seek to claim this island as, as my own fiefdom, but she spoke of the the vile Wukongo and the cruelty that they exhibit, and I would put my hand to the task of stopping them from carrying on their ways. In this, we are aimed at the same purpose. But I will tell you that I believe that if I could gain possession of the scepter, I would be able to lead my people to wipe out the evil Punga once and for all. But my people do not dare enter within the walls of Biknab. Legend tells that it is still home to the gods who created this island and its people, and that any of their creatures who lay eye upon those gods will be struck stone for all of eternity. Would you and your companions be willing to collect the scepter for me? I, I can speak only for myself and Milo, who is already <laughs> nodding his assent. Uh, we would. I would explain the situation to my traveling companions before asking them to make the same commitment. He turns and looks at George and Two-Step. And would the two of you accept this mighty quest? Jelly and I would, yes, the two of us would. Well, watch George, watch where you point at. <laughs> oh, she's sweet and harmless. His club is also made of metal. Yes? Yes. It's very loud. It's very small for one his size. <laughs> How 
how does two step respond to the question? Two step actually, so they were originally going to calm Milo down when they started nodding, like, we need to get, like, let's learn about payment, but uh, too late for that. But so as they, as they, uh, Milo and then um, Robin agree, two step then turns to George and George is like, yeah. So two step just turns around, like, thumbs up, like, I'm in. Wonderful. I cannot thank you enough, but I know that none of you are natives here, and if I gathered from your stories correctly, you all want to find a way off of this island. If you do this and you help us to defeat the Wapungo, not only will I happily assist you in rescuing Asha from the clutches of whatever foul creature holds her at the Dragon's Mall. But I will gather every shaman of my people throughout this island and put them to the task of making the seas safe for you to depart, if they are able. Though I cannot promise that they will be up to the task, we will do everything in our power to do so. If you can somehow find a ship to sail away. This is if we do not ride the dragon. We, we don't know how this is going to go. So, I mean, the, the story kind of goes different ways. But He looks really confused when you say ride the dragon. I'm not sure how that would work. It, it, does, not, it does not fly? We cannot tame the, the dragon, make it serve us? It, I have never seen it move from its place. Milo's confused and slightly disappointed. I imagine it would be much too heavy to fly like a bird. Hmm. Okay. Ship, ship is fine. It's good. What are sheep? Uh, the ship, the, the boat, the floating wood. Yeah, it's good. Ah, they're called sheep. I thought it was ship. Yes, sheep. Both is correct. Sheep ship. <coughs> like big, big. Right. Yes, this feels better in my mouth when I say it. Sheep. Okay, okay. Well, I will ask you all to please stay here for the night, rest, recover, recuperate. And then we will give you instructions on how to find Biknab. Know this, it is said that the city is older than the war with no beginning. And as I said, it once belonged to the gods of this place. You'll know that you have found it when you find a great wall rising up out of the jungle. Although the city is ancient and has deteriorated into ruins, it was once a place of great power and there is still significant sign of its history. On that wall, it is said that the story of this place has been carved in <coughs> exceptionally lifelike detail. And part of that story is a great staff known as the Scepter of Kings. The Scepter gives the wielder, the ability to win any battle. And with it, I am sure that we can finally put our Wapungo enemies in the ground. Do you have any questions for me before you retire for the evening? <clears throat> He's rubbing his eyes. Tobacco. <laughs> That's all he says. <laughs> oh, yes. Tobacco. Smoke weed. Uh... 
fire leaf. Do you, um, do you burn things and inhale the smoke on purpose? Ah, yes, of course. Of course. Um, they also assist us in reaching into the spirit realm. Are you in need of such medicine? George's, yeah. Yeah. I will have some brought to you. In addition, as a thank you for taking care of one of my scouts and destroying five of the vile creatures that assault my people, I would like to give you a vial of Slokjuk. And he has somebody bring over a small um, stoppered uh, gourd. And he sort of looks around and he says, uh, which of you uses the blow guns? <laughs> Yes, I, I think George and oh. <coughs> uh, yes, I remember my uh, my scout Grick said something about a strangely curved blowgun. Uh, you can use this with the darts, and to be fair, uh, if it's coated upon any weapon, I suppose, as long as you break the skin, it would do the job. Um, it will, this is made from the, the slime of a particular slug combined with a rare flower. And it will cause any who is struck by it to become extremely sluggish and slow in their movements and in their cognition as well for a period of time. You may find it helpful uh, should you come across any other of these demonic creatures or Wapungo savages as you attempt to find <clears throat> the scepter of kings. This small vial <clears throat> is enough for three uses. Please take it and, and distribute it among your uh, party as you would. Hmm. Is there anything else that I can do for you? Uh, George, at this point, someone has brought you some um, leaves. Uh, they are dried. Uh, they are red. Uh, they are not brown. They are small. Um, but they vaguely smell of tobacco. Uh, he's going to put him in his pouch okay. for now. Okay. I don't have any questions, Big Big. Thank you, and thank you for your hospitality. Um, it is an honor to have such great warriors here among us. Uh, hey, Milo. You mm -hmm. want to go look at this dragon? And kind of indicates, like, on their back, and then points up the tree. Uh, I, I I think you are trying. I I do not think the dragon is a dragon anymore. But yeah, yes, okay. I I, I think it uh, blah, 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 uh, lost something in translation. We will see. But yes, we will go. It, we uh, it is evil. So oh no, the the big face. We kill the big face. Still, we we kill a monster. It's good. Exactly. But yeah. let's go have a look. Yeah. I, I, I'm curious. And okay. kind of indicates you to get on their back so that we can climb the tree. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, master, master blaster style. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead and give me that roll. That would yeah, be no my. Worries. Come on, with it, this is flavor. Don't, don't, don't fail me now, dice. Uh, wait, uh, <laughs> My Milo. Seeing you before this, he actually gives you. Um, <laughs> advantage he conveys uh through through means of one of his uh 
abilities he can give you luck. Uh, well, I have to roll for it, but he will try to give you that. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that's definitely going to be enough. Yeah. Okay, is that a plus one then? Yeah, advantage plus one. Okay. Yeah, without... 18 any difficulty at all you manage to shimmy up the tree um at this point you're you're well above the area where it's just trunk so there's lots of branches up there that you can use to climb up um and you find yourselves breaking the canopy and um looking out at an immense mountain rising in the distance in the night sky again <laughs> i should say smoke rising out from the top of <clears throat> Sorry, what was that, Stephen? Uh, uh, perhaps it is a dragon. Yes, okay. It's huge. Does it seem... I don't want to ask, is this evil? Because that seems like the wrong question. But I mm -hmm. feel like that seemed like a really simple way of asking what I'm trying to ask, which is... Is there something strange about this volcano? Is there something, because I'm sure I've seen a volcano before. No, is there it, something... it looks like a dormant volcano. Not completely okay. dormant, but. <coughs> it's, okay. I mean, Milo's legitimately not aware of what volcanoes are. Amazingly, like he missed that part in social science <laughs> and geography. So now he's convinced there is a dragon sleeping in the mountain, breathing again. So he's back being excited. Makes sense. Two-step would not correct them. And... Yeah. I just, I'd like that image of us just sort of sat on the canopy, just staring out over the trees, kind of watching this this volcano in the in the moonlight. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, how does George settle in for the night? Uh, he is. Is he? Uh, am I missed it? Are we staying together? Uh, you were told that you're welcome here, so okay. sort of staying wherever you feel like. <laughs> Well, when he gets situated, he did. He has a blanket in his pack. He's going to lay that out and get all comfortable. And he is going to enjoy his pipe, maybe, before he lays down. <laughs> okay. <coughs> How about Robin? Robin is going to situate himself kind of just wrapped a little bit tighter in his now dry trench coat. Uh, leaning kind of back against a, a tree, keeping an eye on George, because he knows that there is all sorts of psychoactive substances floating around right now, and we're up in the canopy of a tree. So he wants <laughs> to just make sure he doesn't go wandering off the edge or anything. But other than Fair that, enough. he kind of settles in to just quietly listen and watch and soak up this, this, this treetop <laughs> edge. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, <coughs> eventually the people of uh, the Wapuni of the village begin to turn out the lights and things begin to become um, more and more um, quiet as slowly but surely this, the village begins to fall asleep. George, the pipe is not tobacco oh no <laughs> but it's not completely different um you normally would need to smoke an entire bowl of uh, pipe tobacco to be able to really fix that nicotine hit yeah. that you're looking for. In this case, two or three puffs in, you feel invigorated and oh. ready for the day because you are smoking coca leaves. Okay. <laughs> These lizards fucking party, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They probably right. have a different metabolism from you all. That's probably <laughs> true. I, I bet they do with that. <laughs> yes, they didn't before. They do now. Exactly. All right. So as the group settles down for the night, eventually two-step and Milo coming back down to uh, find a place to rest more safely for the evening. 
uh, Robin keeping a watchful eye over George, who is experiencing all kinds of interesting sensations oh, this yeah. evening. Um, the village falls asleep and you pass the night. And we'll go ahead and take our mid-game break, and then we'll come back in about five or ten minutes. I'll see you all soon. Awesome. Mm-hmm. See you in a bit. I didn't die. See you all. <laughs> see you in a bit. Thank you for giving us the time to take care of biological needs and uh, whatever else needed to happen in that five or ten minutes. I'm not sure how long we were gone, to be honest. Um, we are ready to jump back in. I have switched the scene over to Morning in the Jungle, but Robin had some information to share. Does he wait until morning? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Seeing, having seen uh, Milo and Two Step go away to climb up the tree, and and George start to settle in, he he was also to wait till the morning to okay. to find a quiet moment to to share with the others what he saw. Okay. Two step. Does two step really sleep? Um, low power mode, low I power guess. Mode, yeah. If there's um, it's kind of one of these things. Like I remember with the breathing thing, I asked you about is mm -hmm. breathing gonna come up a lot? Cause I'll take this beat because that mm -hmm. seems normal. And you were like, not really. And then right. I was like, so I won't. And we'll right. just kind of, we'll just kind of flavor right. that. And I guess the same with sleeping. If there's like a specific feature, I didn't see one that right. like requires it. But otherwise, it's just like yeah, just low power mode, just kind of like. Would probably notice something going past, but isn't like fully aware or anything. Sure, absolutely. Doesn't Maybe you have people feel you have some kind of like immediate uh, danger would wake you up kind of situation, but beyond that, yeah, I guess that's part of the lightning reflex. Right, but yeah, yeah. in general, yeah. just kind of like stops moving to put everyone else at ease. <laughs> fair, enough. fair enough. Fair enough. Um, well then, um, those of you who do fully sleep. Um, and those of you who sort of zone out for the next 12-ish uh, hours or so um, are awoken by the sounds of the uh, Wapuni villagers beginning to um, chatter and move through the trees, um, a number of them going down into the jungle or um, z using zip lines to go out much further into uh, the jungle among the trees than you can see from where you are on uh, the village platforms. And so as the sound of the village waking up wakes all of you up and food is brought to you and um, a, a cold sort of bitter drink that gives each of you a nice jolt of energy uh, is brought to you. It's probably made with coca leaves. Um, Robin, how do you let the group know what happened? Uh, as we're we're sitting there over our nice cold uh, drinks and, and the the provisions we've been given, to, um, the when I examined the crystal, I was sent a vision. I I, I couldn't tell if it was pre-recorded or if it was actually a person, but there there was a woman. The woman that that. Big Big and I spoke of, Asha, she said that she and her ship crashed here uh, about a year ago, uh, around the same time the monkey bats uh, began plaguing the, the Wapuni, and um, she's... Ship or ship? I think ship. Ship? Yeah. But I don't know for sure. Her Flying ship? Yes, uh, a ship from uh, that can go in the sky. Uh, well, uh, George, I don't think there's anything magic about it. I think it's just technology. I, I think it's I think it's just the next big thing in stagecoaches. You know, steam powered then. Probably, sure. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. And... F flying train. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, her, her, her train, her flying train crashed here, uh, and she was captured by the, the Wapongo, and her and the survivors uh, captured and taken to... She called it the Dragon's Maw, and uh, 
Now that the sun is out, can I see kind of through the foliage without climbing up to the top? Of the no, no it's not way in the too. Slightest? The canopy's way too heavy. Okay. Yeah. She she pointed to a volcano and and called it the Dragon's Maw, uh, and and said that there was an, an object that could take control of all of the peoples here and and rule over them, the the royal scepter, and. She she asked us, me, but you're all roped in this because you're here with me, uh, to to find it and free her. I, I don't know exactly how she's trapped in the crystal. I don't I don't think she was trapped in this in the. He took well, it back, right? Yeah, he took okay, it back. Okay, yeah, I, I figured. Yeah. In, yeah. in the crystal that Big Big had, uh, I I think that that was a, a transmitter or, or something like a radio. Uh, to from a, a larger, maybe a crystal that that the Wapungo have control of. Uh, okay, uh, just two two questions. Uh, who has to be tied up for this to happen? Tied up? Um, uh, who is roped in? Oh, I, I don't. Oh, is this a, yes. is this um, a subterfuge? No, it's um, when I, when I say that, I mean um, you are uh, by by force of circumstance uh, joining me on this, oh. this journey because I think that's the. Oh, I know, Milo. We don't need yeah, to coerce okay. you. Uh, no, no. Uh, uh, no, but, but I do think it uh, is the way we get home. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, what is pre-recorded? Imagine. Your favorite musician, uh, mm -hmm. and and your My favorite grandma? song of yeah. the, your grandma has a song oh, yeah. that uh -huh. that she sings to you. She's very famous. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Um, if you can, there are there are several ways to to capture the sound of her of her singing. Uh, and... No one can capture the sound of my grandma singing. You sure. are a friend, but a, I will let this go once. A lesser musician. I misspeak. I apologize. Um, maybe not your favorite, but a, 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 a practicing musician. Um, and then at a later time, when the musician doesn't want to play, but the audience wants to hear the sound, they could mm -hmm. use this, this device to play the sound again, to, to hear it. Ah. And the musician okay. doesn't have to have to spend time doing it for people to enjoy their music. This makes sense. Okay, okay. This is this is a magic or science? Both. Okay. Either. Yes. <laughs> Situational. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So we will save uh, the princess Asha, and uh, we will uh, uh, give the the great scepter to. Uh, to Big Big, and then he will destroy the Wapongo, and the shaman will uh, calm the oceans with magic, and we will go to find my brother. Okay. I think that Asha might also be of help to us in our, our trip, because I I don't know that sailing on a boat is going to get us back to your brother, or to my city, or, or to well where we came from. It It might be it might need magic or technology. Okay, okay, okay. If 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 Asha's if Asha came from a ship ship, then um, they probably are more likely to help us than the shamans. I I I agree with that. That sounds okay. I actually that was a very kind gesture on their part, but I don't see how the shamans are going to help us actually. I. Yeah. And I, I do I do have to say that before before we hand over the, the scepter of kings to Big Big for him to destroy the Wapungo people and and lay claim to this island, I I do need to talk to the Wapungo to see if perhaps they simply have some bad press. I just for due diligence. I, I, I also don't love the idea of handing over the scepter of kings to big big to destroy anybody and this this can have a peaceful resolution 
But if the Wapungo are evil, we will do this, yes? Pro probably. But but I just need I need to know that the Wapungo are evil before we do this. I actually feel um more comfortable going on this mission now I know that we're trying to rescue someone that tried to talk to you uh than I do about in any way getting this object to this ruler. That feels a lot more like interfering in events that aren't for us. Um but if this Asher person came from a similar place that we did, or at least that I did, maybe that could get us home. What's going through George's mind? He he's not computing any of it. <laughs> Magic? No, that's not gonna bring me home. Planet I've never been on. He just doesn't. He doesn't think it's possible for him to get home. But he is somewhat familiar with the idea <clears throat> that magic exists, right? Yeah, but nothing of like teleportation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was most of the magic was associated with like witches and evil, right? Ritual so. sacrifice, magic, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And it's always been bad in his mind. Sure. And here you guys are just freely talking and so he's he doesn't think you're bad though. Like hearing how it, it's just too many thoughts in a way. Mm. Uh, but that cold drink is really helping. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, his mind does keep replaying back and at some point George would like to pull two step aside but that d doesn't have to be now. So. All right. Were there any other points that the party needs to discuss amongst themselves? I mean, I suspect George is done throwing up at this point. So like now that we're in the light of day, you are probably seeing this little guy's hair does change based on his mood. Um, and it's pretty obvious which, which, which hair color goes to what, because like, because everyone always knew what he was feeling, he like never developed any sense of filter. So, but yeah, it, it goes, so it goes, it goes from feeling right now. Oh, he's excited. It, it is very bright green. V very, very brilliant green right now. When he gets confused, it goes towards lighter blue and gray. Uh, you, you can tell when there's words he doesn't understand because, I mean, one, no poker face. And then mm -hmm. two, like everything just kind of goes pale blue. So it changes very quickly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's not gradual. It's it's okay. not a chameleon. It's, it's okay. more like a Christmas light. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well then, uh, carefully descending from the upper echelons of the Wapuni people, you find yourselves on the forest floor once again and moving deeper and deeper into the jungle in the direction that you were given. Hours pass as you press through the oppressive heat and humidity of this place. Um, the sounds of the jungle rising up around you from every direction, the occasional large python-like snake moving through the grass or the trees above you catches your eye, birds with brilliant plumage in every color of the rainbow flit from branch to branch, crying out in bird song unlike any that you've ever heard before. At some point during this walk, George pulls two step aside. So two step, I um was that a, a gun that you had? You're uh you're on you're on you're on mute, Ben. Mute, buddy. Uh two step turns to you as like, what this? And it's like <laughs> the the laser rifle comes out. Uh, <clears throat> Does it use um, rounds? He would pull one of his uh, revolver rounds out to show him. Um, no, it's uh, they're it's essentially light, so they're they're battery packs. And uh, two step kind of pulls out one of the pulls out the charging pack basically, and kind of like waves that. Uh, so it just needs power. Can you? Build that. Theoretically. 
Could you make it look like jelly? Theoretically. All right. He just keeps walking. <laughs> Hilarious. Hilarious. Um, two step walks with um two step walks like a little bit taller because they genuinely think they've just made a friend. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Or at least a customer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand currency. <laughs> right, exactly. All right. Um so Again, you move through the jungle um, for hours and hours. I am going to ask for a roll, in fact. Um, who is the one that is trying to get people moving in the right direction? Uh, who thinks I that mean... they're the one that has the, uh, the better sense of direction, I suppose, is the question. It based on be, no evidence whatsoever. Yeah, based on no evidence whatsoever or fact, Milo would assume it's him, and he would jump forward. That right. said, part of my, in my mind, I also part of me imagined him still writing Master Blaster while they're having their conversation, and he's just looking back and forth between each one. So <laughs> I, I'm fine with whatever the. Oh, goal I kind of forgot you were back there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if he gets Actually, if he gets reined in, it's fine. But otherwise, Milo would jump forward and, until he's reined back. Does anybody stop him? I've been does not trust his own sense of direction. Okay. What about George? Um, his mind is a bit spinny still. He, he enough. One more time of Milo getting us lost, though, and it might change. Okay. <laughs> and what about two-step? I guess it depends what, uh, what, what ordinance or like ordinance abilities are based on because if it's if it's logic i could maybe i, I could maybe attempt to keep track of what i'm doing but if it's something else then i don't know if i have that ability it is logic okay it um, is logic. i think i don't know if two-step would audibly just be like no milo hold on a second but i think two-step would be trying to keep track of where they're walking that what? feels like instilled in them as a robot is it that Milo I, is shouting directions from two steps back, he, and he's not listening? I, I, I don't think he'd even be I think Milo would, like, because he's going by his heart, because he just feels he will find the place. And, like, he definitely probably finds himself going out, and then he notices that two step who he can see above all the, the grasses is not coming toward him, so he's just rushing back. But effectively, <laughs> following his heart until he realizes that his big brother is out of sight, and then he races back each time. So okay. prob probably two step. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to try All and right. keep track of where we were told to go. Yeah, okay. Uh, go ahead and give me a logical. Maybe I should have shut up. 18. Not bad. Uh, 17, I think. Oh, 17. The 18 was the previous roll. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. Yeah, it, is, it hadn't popped up yet. Yeah, um, you're. they gave reasonably good instructions and gave you some um, notable landmarks for you to use to make sure that you don't get turned around under the canopy without being able to have a clear view of the sun. Um, and you make reasonably good time, in fact, uh, despite Milo helping. Eventually, you press through the jungle and you find yourselves standing before a massive ancient stone wall. It rises 30 feet into the, high, in, into the air above you. It is covered in old, um, thick, heavy vines um, with big banana-like leaves uh, sprouting off of them. And the wall seems to stretch for miles in both directions, like a physical barrier has been placed between the side of the jungle that you stand on and whatever is on the other side of this wall. What do you do? And in the wall, this is the first wall he's seen and the last wall he got described had a story of the prophecy in the island lay down. And without any difficulty, you are able to see that all, like walking maybe a hundred yards in either direction, and it, it seems to continue to go on 
in both directions beyond where you stop that the wall is covered <laughs> from top to bottom in pictograms um but beyond the pictograms um incredibly lifelike carvings of people um though they don't all look like humans they seem to tell many stories <coughs> prevalent throughout much of it are carvings of large serpentine creatures that seem to have the upper torso of a man and long heavy snake bodies for their bottom halves and they are inevitably depicted performing epic deeds of arcane power or ruling over anything and everything around them. You see pictures of them causing the sun to rise and fall. You see images carved into the wall of them making the jungle grow up from a desolate plain, causing the tides to move in and move out at their whim. <coughs> and ruling over two other <coughs> groups of people, both unique in their own way. One looks basically human, although they have a much rougher, heavier looking bone structure and um, facial features, um, almost, Neanderthal in appearance, uniformly shown to be bulky and strong um, and generally working in some sort of heavy manual labor under the watchful eye of the sorceress snake people. You also see very small lizards walking upright and they tend to be shown acting as sort of house servants around great halls and houses of the snake men one scene that you see depicted quite frequently over and over again as you move past each of these carved stories seems to involve a serpent man regally cloaked and crowned in jewels. He is placed, stands is the wrong word because he has a snake tail for legs, but he stands for lack of a better word atop a massive ziggurat and wields a great scepter that bears the head of an eagle. Its eyes in every depiction are carved out deeply into the stone. And you're able to gather that it looks like there were probably gems in set in the eyes of that scepter in every single depiction of it on this wall. Though they've long since been taken. And then standing before this snake king are thousands and thousands of subjects, snake people clearly wapuni and these brute-like man creatures gazing up at him with fervor and loyalty and love clear on their faces. There's something odd about these depictions. 
the wall is big enough for them to be carved at real size. But they are carved from the likes of a Michelangelo. They look like they could walk out of that wall at any moment. And can you give me an alteration? You become kind of obsessed with this because something about it is striking you as unnatural. And while the rest of the group is trying to figure out how to get past this wall, you kind of wander off. Kind of looking for the next depiction of this scene at the next one, at the next one. Mm -hmm. Each of them has you know, a depiction of thousands of people and not all of them are actual height because there's perspective. But all of the uh, subjects that are closest to the perspective of the carver or the viewer are uncannily lifelike. And you become convinced that they are actual people who return to stone somehow melded into this wall. Do the details vary depiction to depiction? Like, is it a slightly different Snake King that is standing? The, the Snake King is not always the same. Um, sometimes it is a um, more delicate looking feature. Um, not anything that you would immediately be able to say male or female, um, but not as bulky, not as strong. Um, the individuals that are at the base of the um, cigarette looking up, all of them that, that look this sort of uncannily lifelike, every single one is a different depiction. Um, and it's at this point that you um, look around and realize you have no idea where your group is. Pick a direction and start okay. to, to walk back. Okay. Um, in the meantime, George Two Step and Milo, um, as you stand here before this ancient wall, and Robin has been sort of talking to himself as he wanders back and forth. Um, he walked off that way and then he walked off that way and he came back and he walked off that way again. And what are you all focused on at this point? I will say that as you were following along the wall a bit, um, George Two-Step and Milo, um, you did find a pair of doors, like King Kong doors. Right, like immense four feet thick stone doors that are closed shut. Well, that makes me want to ask my question even more, which is my initial thoughts, sorry, when arriving on the scene um, would be to, because they said people came here and never came back. And there's clearly like, this is the direction their people would have come from. And this feels like, especially if there's a big door here, then this feels like somewhere that people may occasionally travel through. So I guess Two Step would like to sort of like survey the area, like looking for signs of people coming through, or maybe signs of a struggle, or maybe okay. signs of, yeah, signs of good or bad, as in ills to us, good, sure. like good or bad feelings towards us, maybe sure. would be have been in the area recently. Sure. Uh, perception. What's Milo doing? Uh, Milo is pretty one directional. As soon as he saw pictures, he's just looking for dragons and knights. And like he just, he was not aware that Robin was going one way or another. He just like started walking and was looking at pictures. Okay. Um, give me a perception check to see if you find any dragons or knights. And what is George doing? 
uh, confused why his group seems to be mesmerized by this wall is more of just looking for a way to get through it. Like, this is in our way. Okay. Well, there's a giant door. Yep. Um, and there's, uh, well, I guess if you want to give me a perception check, we can see if you figure out anything else. Yeah. Um, coming back to does, two does, steps. Oh, no, go ahead. I'm no, sorry. real quick. Does the giant yeah. door look openable? Uh, give me that perception check. Okay. Yeah. Define openable. <laughs> By us. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it looks like, um, it might be openable if you tied a locomotive to it. Yeah. And use that to pull it. Yeah. Um, two step. 19. A 19 is a pretty good roll. Um, you don't find any signs of struggles, and you don't find any signs of people um, your sized or uh, the Wapuni sized. Um, you do find a few other things that are interesting. Um, one is a significant amount of um, fecal matter sort of has been dropped all over sort of around the border of this uh of this wall do you have any uh experience with uh animals um i would assume no okay. basically okay but am i at least allowed to ask if nothing else but for my sake large or small fecal matter mm. It's a fair question. It's a fair question. And I think um, that's I think even someone with no experience of animals could be like, that's pretty big poop. No. Um, so in this case, we're talking about like, you know, smaller than a fist. Each each lump. Mm -hmm. But there's a significant amount of it spread throughout the area. Almost um, lined mm -hmm. up, or would it kind of like it just seems like it sort of follows the wall. Um, you also notice that here and there, every once in a while, there is what looks to be like a very, very large, um, old, sort of beginning to deteriorate, um, like, mess of, um, like, cobweb, like some kind of weird, like, spider silk blah, mess. I hate to ask the same question again, but does this seem like large spider web? <laughs> like very like, large. There would be a lot of it would take a lot of spiders to make this or um well yeah, like um you know, enough to cover uh fifteen or twenty foot sphere in various places here and there. Mm. Mm. Okay. Diameter, not radius. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes a difference. <laughs> oh, it does, but not enough. We're not talking like Shelob here or anything like that, right? <laughs> Pay attention to school, kids. Geometry does matter. Save your life one day. <laughs> You're trying to figure <laughs> out if there are 10 foot wide spiders or 30 <laughs> foot wide spiders in the area. <laughs> Um, so those are the things that you notice. Um, Milo, even with a 25, you do not find anything that you recognize as knights or dragons. Hmm. There are warriors. Hmm. Um, all of them are these strange half-snake people. And uh, they do not wear the kind of armor or use the kind of weapons that you are familiar with, but it is clear from their posture and from sort of the way that they are wearing and holding the things that they are wearing and holding that they are certainly warriors of some kind. Um, but they seem to mostly just be um, putting down rebellions among the man-like creatures or the Wapuni. Yeah, I mean, he never gives up. He just keeps, I mean, 
I mean, this might actually be the time wants procession to use Lucky because like I I picked a direction, just kept going. There's a chance Rob is in that direction. There's a chance he's in the complete opposite direction. And absolutely, and, and absolutely, Milo's just keep going. I think this is a great opportunity to use your Lucky function. Can you let everybody who's watching and who's playing yeah. know exactly what that does? Uh, so this is one of my perks and it's very, it's much more mild than people who are accustomed to either, uh, 5e or to, um, uh, to Pathfinder. So once per game session in a moment of need, you can call on luck to shine upon you. The GM decides what form this luck takes. That's it. Okay. Fair enough. And you are using that ability now. Yeah. I, I, I would love to just like bump into like not even i mean i'm just walk i'm just looking for dragons as i bump into robin who maybe like watches me come and bump into him like i think this is a, that's a perfectly acceptable use of that ability um at some point as you wander and also kind of get lost yourself um although not lost because you do know which direction you were going uh you will bump into robin george unfortunately um you know you just sit down and, and put your head in your hands and you're like, how are we going to open that damn door? Yep. <laughs> and that's pretty much where you are. Yep. <laughs> so um, at some point, uh, two-step Milo and Robin eventually find themselves back to George still sitting on the ground, racking his mind to figure out what the options are here. Two, two steps. Do you, do? do you think you can open that door right there? I, I... Quite frankly, I, mean, I don't think you're a steam engine, but uh, you look um, powerful to me. I could give it a go, but it would be pretty unlikely. How much do you know about spiders? Nasty buggers. Are they very big when you where you come from? Nope. Would you all froze? Uh, you would all you... froze. Are spiders not big? Where you all come from? No. no they're, they're small. They're like household pests. Hmm. Would you point out the reason why? Yeah, why do you ask? What's going on? Uh, well, that just looks awfully like spider's webs. Oh, but it's kind of huge. Thing. That's what I thought. I mean, do spiders work as a group? I don't know a lot about spiders. So do they, do they work in big groups or... There's these one spiders that I know of back. Uh, some, there's like a time of year where they wrap themselves up in a bush and they cover the whole bush in webbing and a bunch of little ones. Egg sac like, maybe? I don't know. Does it look like an egg sac? Do they look like egg sacs? Um, <laughs> you want to give me a learning roll? Yeah. Can I, can I use. Never mind. I was going to say, can I use my observant feet mm -hmm. to uh, perk, sorry, perk to see if they look like the similar egg sacs that would be from my hometown? Yeah, uh, remind me of how that perk works again. Uh, so typically it's actually based off a of perception roll. If you use okay. this ability after failing a perception roll, the GM decides whether you just, you notice the initial target. Yeah, I'll, give, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give that to you. Um, but um, I will say that this is a, a learning roll. Okay, so I, I'll, I'll let you have it. Okay. Well, let me see if I fail first. <laughs> Does it look like eggs learning isn't always fun. <laughs> um, they they don't remind you of egg sacks. Okay. Um, did I get a roll from? Robin as well. No, no, I, I held in place. I, I can't. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and give me one. Okay. Um, they remind you of some of the things that you've seen, um, like in books, um, trap spiders use. So. Does that, does that mean I come to the conclusion that there are spiders inside those things? Or those are like captured kills of... Well... Love that part. 
you come to the conclusion that there have been at some point in the past spiders in this area. Yep. I, I two step. I know that that is a sign of, of spiders have been. That's nope. Nope. No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Not so opposed to burning the forest down now, are you? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think I've come to the same conclusion, though. There's absolutely nothing fantastical about spiders, so this conversation did not interest Milo, and he just attempted to start climbing the wall. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, there are thick, heavy vines sort of covering... Uh, the wall, um, but go ahead and uh, give me a might check as you try to make your way to the top. This will not go well. It is known. Hmm. Okay. No. Let's see. That's not horrible. Um, yeah, I mean, it takes you a while. You make your way up um, and then you realize that you don't have a place where there's a good handhold once you're about 20 feet up. And so you have to make your way slowly back down again. Um, but eventually you are able to uh, get your way uh, to the top. However, mm -hmm. as you do so, you pull yourself up to the top and you look down and you say, hey i made it look at me and you like throw your hands up and you do a little dance and you slip and you fall backwards and you roll over the edge on the other side and oh. fall to the ground <laughs> <laughs> and that's an example of every roll matters folks because a 13 wasn't enough to make it all by itself that is failing forward that's what that uh, is that is failing forward and we are going to go with three points of damage from that fall but it is not um uh what not is the word again not lethal damage. not lethal okay george would instantly be like, oh crap and start climbing up <laughs> yeah so would, so would two step just milo and just start chasing after them okay uh george with a 16 is able to make it up to the top without too much difficulty all right we're in the area then Oh. oh, exploding dice! Oh, oh my god! Boom, boom, boom! Holy crap! Holy crap! Milo, I'm coming! What? <laughs> <laughs> Rescue mode engaged. You don't even so, use your hands. So, so, he just runs up the wall. <laughs> two step um, approaches the wall and surveys it, and then um, looks at his hands and converts them into very sharp little wedges. And he just starts punching holes in the wall and kicking holes in the wall with his feet as he climbs up, making a perfect little step ladder for Robin to follow up behind him. You get advantage on your attempt, sir. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Mike, yes. And then I, from my well-rounded, I, I have advantage one, and then I get another for two. Is that how it Sadly, works? if you have, you have, what's your attribute? Is it zero? Yeah. You or no, it's, it's, it's one. Oh, then yeah, that's up to the GM then. What was the question again? Um, For my well-rounded, uh, Mike would count since we're out of combat, giving me advantage one. Do I get advantage two from? Yes. Cool. So if it was a, if you had a zero for a... Um, or, and I was rolling uh, just a d20. Yep, you would only roll two d20, and then take the higher. Cool. Even no matter, even you could have advantage thirty. It doesn't matter with attribute zero. Right. Uh, and on this one, it actually wouldn't have mattered because you got a four on your second one, and it got thrown away with your advantage two. So. Yeah. So even even with that, you still exploded twice. <laughs> yeah. For a total of a 24 on that roll. So with the help of this little step ladder that was made for you, you were just up. It, it, it may as well just be like you're climbing a ladder. It is as easy as pie to that. get up to the top of this thing. Um, and then uh, two step grabs both uh, Robin and George under either arm and <laughs> says something about, I can't do this more than once, but 
we should probably get down and check on Milo. And he just jumps off and jets fire out of his uh, feet. And he... <gasps> what? No. Set me down. And you find a halfling with bright orange hair going... <laughs> orange is pain. That's what orange is. Okay. <laughs> Wind has been knocked out. <laughs> and you see him reach into his little knapsack like a little boy scout and he pulls out rope that he was going to pass down to you all and he just like leads back and just... <laughs> uh, does anybody address the situation with Milo? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. He step politely takes the rope. <laughs> Milo uses it to pull himself up. <laughs> uh, yeah, Robin will, will minister to, to his his like bruises. Absolutely. Uh, George would instantly start looking around to see if they're in danger. Okay. Um I'll give you a perception check on that. Nice. Oh. I sense no danger. Nope. <laughs> Definitely not. I'm glad we're safe. You are so certain, in fact, that you just start walking into the ruin. Because what lies before you, in fact, is an immense ancient city of stone that has crumbled into almost nothing. Buildings spread out for hundreds and hundreds of yards in every direction. Giant trees have sprouted up in the midst of this place. What was once a flagstone street uh, leads away from the giant stone door that you didn't even attempt to open and deeper and deeper into this ancient sprawling ruin of a city. Whoa. It is silent. It is silent. But the birds aren't even making noises? The jungle has grown quiet. At how peaceful this place is, it is almost a reverent silence. And George feels very safe here. Yeah. After a moment, Robin... Um, finishes taking care of Milo's bumps and bruises and you can have your hit points back. And uh, you all notice that George is like 200 yards into the city. Uh, Milo takes off on a run. <laughs> uh, what does Robin do? Robin will follow at a more walking <laughs> okay. kind of just in awe of the this wondrous city hidden behind this wall just taking in the the pathways and the buildings and the, how nature has reclaimed it just taking it back you can uh, immediately tell that it was a Uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Uh, a primitive city. It certainly wasn't uh, modern 21st century living or even 19th century living. Um, it brings to mind um, videos or, or books, uh, pictures that you've seen of sort of um, what um, maybe what sort of ancient Aztec or Mayan cities may have looked like in their heyday um, because it has a very strong feel of, of what they do in fact look like in your world today um, as ruins. Um, but despite the fact that it was clearly made with um, non-modern technology, uh, the fact that it has withstood the, uh, the ages in the way that it has indicates that it was built uh, with extremely great precision uh, and craftsmanship. You all continue to move um, through the ancient ruin, through the city. Off in the uh, far distance, uh, you can see a immense pyramid-like structure uh, slowly rising up 
uh, into the sky, um, hundreds of feet probably into the sky would be your best guess. Um, but the distance between here and there is far enough that you can't place it exactly. Um, can um, I? Yeah, go ahead. It it is in fact. It does in fact look like a ziggurat. Yes. The one from the the depictions. Ah uh, yes, in fact yes. Um, two step. What are you doing at this point? Um, two step is deeply suspicious of this situation. Mm -hmm. Um, and so is kind of following from the back, preferably, and is very much trying to keep an eye on everyone else but is quite intently looking up high at nooks and crannies for like possible uh, people looking at them or watching them. I guess, I guess they've expanded that to anything watching or looking rather than people, um, but thinks that there's definitely just has a bad feeling about this. Thinks there's definitely something watching in some way. Yeah. Yeah. You get, you get like a sense that something isn't right. Mm. Um, give me a perception check. Want that suspicion validated? Uh, that's a seventeen. Okay. Um, so as Milo runs off after George and Robin is sort of moving at a reasonable pace along this old sort of broken cobbly street, um, two step is eyes to the sky eyes to the top of every building, looking in every dark hole of every old um, stone structure, whether it was a house or something else, it's impossible to tell at, at this stage of uh, deterioration. But um, a lot of them still seem to have at least partial roofs. And so there's a lot of darkness, a lot of places to hide here and there. Um, and you're not seeing anything at first. Uh, and then your foot slips out from under you and you catch yourself. And you look down and you realize that you just stepped in a piece of fresh feces about the size of a fist. Mm. And looking around, you can see that they litter the area ahead of you where there seems to be a, um, a, a sort of uh, opening like a town center might have in it. Although in this case, it's just one of maybe dozens of them in a city this size, uh, but a sort of market opening has, uh, has opened up ahead of you. Um, George is on the other side of it, um, beginning to climb up and over a pile of rubble where an entire building has completely collapsed uh, to see what's on the other side. And you can see that there's this, this feces, this poop is scattered all over the place. And then you look up and you see something with large black bat-like wings launch into the sky. And then another one and then another one, and another one. And then there's this loud monkey-like cackling laugh coming down from above. And a handful of fresh poo gets thrown oh. in your direction. And they all dive bomb at George. Robin, danger, danger, action stations. <laughs> Oh my god! Arms already changed. Uh, they kind of like because for a second when they looked at this, they were like, "Oh, spiders," and then when wanted to keep stop moving, but then seeing this, just danger, and just start sprinting towards George. Um. So two steps shouts out, "Danger! Danger!" Starts running. I'm um, occasionally stepping and like slipping in another turd here and there. Um, as each of them is dive bombing, they're throwing poo at Robin and Milo and George. Every one of you gets smacked in the head or the body with this explosion of nastiness. Yeah. As they scream out and go for their prey. And we'll leave it there for tonight. <laughs> Uh, so that'll be fun to come back to in a week. Yeah.
yeah. that, that's what a three on perception gets you, huh? It, that, you know, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I moved the story forward. You did. You did indeed. <laughs> was it was it the three on was it the three on perception or was it the three? Oh, it was a perception. I actually read it as it, they'd made the same role um, of like alteration and I thought they were like falling under some kind of spell. No, it was perception. It was perception, which is something George is normally good at. Yep. Normally. Yeah. normally. That's why we trusted him. But I mean, in this case, I think in all of the ruins, though, makes sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I guess that was it for tonight. Our second session in Open Legend RPG. I hope everyone enjoyed this mostly role play focused uh, session. We're going to get into some combat a week from now and get a better idea of what that looks like in this particular system. So I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you all very much for staying with us all the way to the end of the session. Um, Jacob. Yes. What's going on with Avenue Studios this week? Awesome stuff. Tomorrow. Check the day. It is tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow at around 6.30 p.m. Eastern, we are going to be in the new remodeled studio doing a live stream, testing out Crucible VTT for Foundry. Uh, we are pumped. So it's going to be, uh, we're testing a couple different things. We're testing a new time, time slot. We're testing the new studio, and we're also testing out the system. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, awesome. That's going to be on YouTube. So I'll send the link over there in the channel here in a minute. In the yeah. minute. Uh, what is the new time slot? Uh, it's 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Then we used to Eastern. do okay. 9, 8.30. I don't remember now. It's been... <laughs> doesn't matter it changed <laughs> doesn't matter it's 6 30 now exactly absolutely awesome so, steven do you have anything going on yeah well it's so it's it's nascent just this weekend i established a new company back in south dakota so i have a production company and we have done casting calls and we are going to start producing uh content for um uh podcast and we will be awesome. dropping those uh, on halloween so you will get okay. future updates every week on how this company is progressing but we're we're building it from the ground up very exciting. Awesome. Copper Dragon Productions. It's coming. Copper Dragon Productions. That's so cool. Ben, what do you have going on? Um, d Just that I've taken it over the socials. So uh, follow us on socials, guys. We've got TikTok. We've got Instagram. We've got X. I am trying to get us a Blue Sky code. I'm trying. I'm trying. We'll be on Blue Sky eventually. I might, uh, I might have that. somebody that can grab us one. I'll see if I can make that happen. I've got my feelers out, but they're tricky. They're tr it they it feels like trying to get into a members club. It's difficult. Right? <laughs> and I remember hearing something about there being some kind of a table quest project that you're working on. Um. Oh yeah. I mean, we can talk about that. I'm making. I'm doing a sci-fi sci game that's going to go up on YouTube. It's um. It's currently in the works. We're halfway through recording the whole season, and we're going to start getting that out weekly pretty soon. Haven't got an official date for that yet, but it's something going to be very different, and it's it's really good. We are I'm really, really like looking it. forward to it. How about you, Kyle? Nothing, nothing much in the works for me. Just a lot, a lot of Baldur's Gate three. Oh man, <laughs> I I wish I had the time for a lot of Baldur's Gate three. <laughs> That's pretty nice. I wasn't even sure I was gonna buy it because mm -hmm. like I don't feel like I have the time for it. But man, I have seen so much good content about it. I I had to, I had to pull the trigger. I've got like maybe eight hours in, like maybe eight hours. So amazing game loving it absolutely loving it um i will say that on my part um i am about to launch a new uh pay to play pay uh play by post game using open legend rpg in a magic based post apocalyptic seattle if anybody's interested you know where to find me on our discord hit me up and i'll get you the details and uh finally i'll just start out that this week's raid is going to quest keep because awesome. they're all in cosplay, playing, uh, playing around a, a one table in, in in the way that none of us ever really get chance to do anymore. Know, so I know. I, I, well, let's let's go there for some for some good old fashioned escapism. <laughs> let's let's go watch the animals in the zoo, huh? <laughs> <laughs> from our all right, closes. guys. Exactly, exactly. Thank you again Thank for you. staying with us. Uh, we'll see you next week, and until then, may all your tables have quests. Good night, y'all.